<laughs> it is covered or it's it not? Is. Okay. Perfect. It's eight o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Can everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Let's just to open the public here. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anything for public discussion? Otherwise, we'll get to the road vacation here in a little bit. If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda in minutes. Thanks. Is there a second? Okay. Um, any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Um, <clears throat> next up is the claims, which are are in our packet for June. The claims early here, so any questions on them? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion. Okay, thanks. Is there a second? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. We'll Hold our breath for four minutes till eight o five. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Or just the second copy? Do you need this one signed? No, that's just my copy. Okay. This is this is Oh, yeah. That's not to sign it. I thought we should we no. probably need a copy of the drainage ones you too. Can, but can I can sign them. Well, no, no, well yeah, we'll need them for everyone. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> just let Brittany know. Or Marge. Marge might have them. All right. 
Mm-hmm. Glock just rolled at 805. I would entertain a motion to open the public hearing for this road vacation. Okay. Second. All right, Carter second. Mm-hmm. Any discussion? Um, roll call vote, please. Plath? Yes. Jarks? Yes. Wachter? Yes. Nath? Yes. Stecker? Yes. Motion carried unanimous. Our public hearing is open. Doug, did you want to start off with anything? Sure, I'll go ahead. And, uh, the board set the date for this public hearing by resolution on March 26, uh, 2024. I have the resolution 0326-2402. Notice uh, was mailed to all landowners that would be adjacent to this roadway and other parties, utilities, on May 15, 2024. Notice was published in Algona. Uh, Cook, South Upper Des Moines on May 16, 2024, and the Soy City Herald on May 15, 2024, and the Bancroft Register on May 15, 2024. Uh, the engineer's office did not receive any written comments, um, and we do have, uh, we have received some oral comments, and Glenn Preston is here, who would probably be one of the more uh, affected landowners uh, being he is um, he owns on the north side of the drainage ditch uh, there um, so everything has been uh, properly notified uh, for this hearing okay Glenn did you want to talk at all or well I mean, I don't want it close the whole way. I've got to use that uh, to cross that, uh, bridge in order to get across the other side. Yep. I do not need it starting at the property line, but I need 240 feet from the very the top edge on the north side of the ditch. That that would be all I would need to the edge of your grass there. Pardon? You have grass There's there grass. for 240 feet. Yeah. I, yep. Well. Part of it's grass, and then it's also going to have to be end rows to get 16 to get to the uh, field to the northeast, and okay. then the next 16 is to do the field uh, right along the dirt road. Okay. Yep. So, but 240 feet is what I would need. Okay. Did you hear anything from Steve Colash at all there? On the I talked side? to Steve. This would have been, oh, sometime prior to uh, setting the, uh, the hearing, sometime in March, and Steve uh, had no concerns. Okay. And Steve would be able to eat all of his Everything that Steve does with his fields comes from the uh, 340th Street, so he uses that south portion, south of the drainage ditch. He does not go north with anything. Yo. All right, any, any other questions or comments from the board or public? There's a culvert across there, correct? That is correct. And that's not a bridge. Pardon me? It's not a bridge. No, it's no, a it's a culvert. Corrigan melt pipe. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Anything else you have for comments, Doug? I do not. Okay. I do. I put a video in your folder. I don't know if you had a chance. You could. It's pretty clear that uh, from 340th Street going north uh, to the half mile line is in pretty good shape. Uh, once you get past, get north of that half mile, uh, very little drainage, and it appears that 
there may be some people that go out and uh, use that road to see whether or not their four wheel drives can can make it. Um, but uh, it, in my mind, it would be a good a good solution to uh, vacate the northern portion of that road and make sure that Glenn gets keeps the access that he desires. Mm -hmm. Close here. Okay. We have a motion to close here. All right. Roll call vote, please. Plath? Yes. Jerks? Yes. Wachter? Yes. Nath? Yes. Stecker? Yes. Nice and carries. Um. The motion that I prepared actually vacated the whole roadway, the way the language is. Uh, I would like to uh, put in this, it was actually a resolution, put in this resolution that we did receive uh, comments from Glenn Preston and he wanted to uh, ensure that uh, he had the access to the CRP in his field to the north. Um, so if it would be all right with the board, if we could, uh, if we could uh, go ahead and table this, I will redo the resolution and have the board pass the resolution for uh, next week. We'll put it on the agenda. Two weeks. Two, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. If that if that satisfies the board. Otherwise, I could quickly yeah. redo it. Yeah, I mean, even if you could quickly redo it, yet today we could probably act on it here. In okay, a bit. I will. I will certainly make an attempt, and we will go with that in the motion that. We probably need to have the resolution updated, but it probably wouldn't. I, I mean, it shouldn't be. We'll be here for a little while. It, okay, like, if I can come back up yeah, a little bit can, later. We can handle um, that In later. fact, I'd like to just sit in on the, uh, the handbook discussion. So um, I'll go back down and we'll, we'll, look, we'll get this taken care of. And I think I'll just go 250 feet north of the ditch, Glenn, to make sure that is satisfactory. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Do you do you want that? Like, what will your reference point be? Well, it'll be, it'll be the center of center of the ditch, or no, north north it'll edge. It'll start out. It'll be. It's approximately one thousand eight hundred seventy-five feet to the north top of the north ditch. So, it will be that the. Road vacation will begin 1,875 plus 240, 250, excuse me. Yeah. So that would be 2,225 2, feet north of the southwest corner of section 33. That's where it will begin. And it'll then run north to the northwest uh, corner of section 33. Okay, yep. That would work for me. Okay. I'll see you might want to look at the uh, we have listed for the chairman at the bottom. Uh, I saw that earlier, okay. yes, and I did get that changed, so yes, okay. sorry. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. All right. Thanks, Doug. We'll sure. come back to that when you have the resolution updated. Thank you, Glenn. We'll do take we, care of it. Do I need to be here for the rest of it? If no, we got it. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay, take Thank care. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up is the evaluation of the secondary road response to the May 20 and 21st weather event. Uh, yeah, I, I put this on the board's agenda to discuss this a little bit. Um, last Monday night, Tuesday morning, uh, between Algona and Wesley, uh, people received anywhere from five to seven, um, even heard some eight inch totals of rain. Uh, the dedicated employees of the secondary road department arrived to work at 6.30 and they started their service for the public. 
um, checking roads, closing roads that had uh, water on them. Uh, then in the afternoon, we received uh, some high winds, some sort of thunderstorm came through, and uh, we received high winds. Again, the road department went out, moved, uh, moved the branches that were had fallen, the trees that had fallen, got those off the road so citizens could use county roads. Uh, at the transfer station, we actually, our shop uh, did receive some damage up there, and uh, so we uh, knew that we needed to get some repair done on that. So the 22nd, uh, the road department worked together. Uh, our north end foreman and our south end foreman coordinated uh, work. We knew that it mainly was uh, southeast, uh, south and southeast of Algonia and Wesley. We did have some stuff up north of Wesley, but the road department got probably about 90% of the roads uh, gravel back in shape so they could be used uh, the following day. Um, we right now, the, at last count, we had 24 locations. Uh, again, probably all but four of those were taken care of on Wednesday. Uh, on the 23rd, we finished up repairing what could be uh, repaired. Uh, there was a disaster declaration. The engineer's office started uh, started the documentation that is required for disasters. Uh, we started planning for some major repairs and replacements. Uh, I do have some photographs that I'd just like to show of the uh, two larger uh, damaged structures, one being right uh, south of south and east of Algona. Uh, Gerber's, Dave Gerber, uh, Mike uh, Kuhlman own property, but uh, we actually lost a road culvert. Uh, one section was laying to the west, another section was probably uh, floated um, 250 yards or so causing uh, access they did not they do not have any access to their farms uh, back there uh, we are hoping that uh, if we don't get rain today we're hoping that tomorrow we can get something completed there a temporary <laughs> fix so they can have access to the property uh, we also have a have a bridge uh, north line of section uh, four of Laverne, or excuse me, five of Laverne. Uh, you can see in this photograph here, stocks that are backed up, they're actually pushing along the timber stringers of this uh, structure. Uh, water over the banks coming back into the uh, drainage ditch. Uh, we had water over both sides of the road. Uh, you can see right in here, I don't know how well, but we had an abutment. We got some sort of a failure back there of the embankment behind the abutment. Uh, we did not lose the structure, but we do have some work to do. This is south looking. Uh, you can see the water gets back up over the banks, um, but then that bridge is gonna take a little bit of work there. So I guess I'm asking, uh, the board for evaluation if you think we uh, our job was good enough uh, if it was not good enough um, but please let me know uh, the bridge to Gerber's and Kuhlman's uh, we took that out of the program construction program this year due to uh, funding and not having enough funding to work on bridges and culverts that are located on gravel roads uh, this bridge here is one that uh, uh, we were going to replace uh, with money from windmills, uh, but we left it as a question mark whether or not to do it or not, or spend that money somewhere else. Um, so I guess I'd just like the board to uh, uh, at least let us know if we're doing our job adequately. 
I didn't receive any complaints from, from the storm. Yeah. Can I make a public comment? Yeah. So, sure. so we were flooded. Our house was flooded. Our house in Wesley, our garage in Wesley was flooded. Um, my husband has lived on our road for almost 54 years, and this is the first time in 54 years we had water in over our 14. Um, in two places, north of us and south of us. And that morning I was, after being up since 1.30, trying to clean out water in our basement, on our way to work for the board meeting, and I met Matt Slugger in the road grader cleaning off the road, and it just made me more confident to know that we were taken care of and that, you know, we would be able to get to and from work. So thank you for that. Thank you to Matt, and it is very appreciated for what you guys do. Thank you, Tim. And there was one time I did inform the foreman of a tree over the road, and it wasn't probably a half hour later it was gone. And that didn't expect it good. I mean, that's, that's a very quick response. Yeah. May I add well, into that? So I had talked to Doug to ask for him to put in numbers of what it's going to cost to fix the roads and the damages. So we, I've already submitted um, that we would probably meet our threshold here in the county, which is $68,000, considering the amount of flooding that Wesley took in um, Algona, their wastewater plant was up and running pretty much 24 seven. Um, and then as well as the county road, so I feel like we're gonna meet that 68,000 threshold. Uh, but I would need those pictures too, Doug, as well. Uh, as of right now, they did do a federal doc uh, federal declaration for Polk, Adams, I can't remember the other county. Um, or, oh, Dan. Yes, thank you. Um, so, as far as the suit being in that, I'm not for sure yet. I know that they're still pushing on more numbers and getting everybody's figures in. But um, at this time, I'm assuming we're going to meet that 68000 easily. But keeping track of wages, time, Equipment for both cities and the county is important. Yeah, there'll be any funds available to fix the bridges or anything that was done from the state or federal government. Uh, the only way it would be is if there is a federal declaration, declaration um, that that would be pot that I'm aware of at least. Uh, R14 uh, is is a uh, classify in a way that if there is damage there, which there was not, uh, state funds would be available for that particular road. It's a, a rural collector. So, um, but the other locals where we receive most of our our damage are would have to be some sort of federal declaration and. This is one of the things that grow departments in Iowa, counties in Iowa, uh, we have 90% of the roads that were damaged, the areas that were damaged have been repaired. Uh, we do not necessarily have photographs of the damaged road, and I've been out with the inspectors, the auditors that are making sure that federal dollars are being spent correctly, and they more or less do not believe that water was over the run because <laughs> they see crops on both sides of them uh, four weeks or you know months later. Uh, so, but I, I do. The road department did a heck of a job. Um, I. I want them to know that they're appreciated by the engineer's office uh, for their work, uh, their service, um, their call to duty. Uh, they take it, they take it serious when these types of events. They take it serious when every day of work. So, thank you well, to the road department. Yep, thank you. Um, and yeah, I know with FEMA and disaster declarations, photos of the damage is critical for them. All right, anything further on this topic? I do not. Okay.
Okay. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Or we will. All right. We are up to construction in the right of way. Uh, we have two locations uh, bridge project and resurfacing project. We'd like the board to take action to close the roadway. We'll start about uh, with the bridge first. That's on the uh, Bold Hobart Road P30. So this would be closing uh, that bridge. And again, I believe it's in the public folder. Or in the board's folder, excuse me. To put the resolution in. Okay. That would be. Well, I was wondering about the resolution he has before. Do you want to wait to number that till you pass it? Yeah, that could okay. probably be number three. Okay. This could be number one. Okay. I'll move to approve the resolution then. And that is resolution 05 Is there a second to that motion? Okay, thanks. Any. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Platt? Yes. Jerks? Yes. Wachter? Yes. Matt? Yes. Stecker? Yes. All right. Motion carries unanimous. And you have another one there? Yeah, then this is for the resurfacing. Um, actually, some of the resurfacing has started. Uh, with uh, some milling and the cold in place recycling, so we would like to close that road. We believe they'll be uh, working um, up uh, in this area at the end of this week or the beginning of next, next Monday. Okay. Thank you. The next resolution for that is 05 28 um, I'd move to approve that resolution. Is there a second? Okay, thanks. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Platt? Yes. Turks? Yes. Wachter? Yes. Matt? Yes. Stecker? Yes. Motion carries. All right, there's that, please. Thank you. Yep. Construction in the right away, Doug? Uh, there is none. All right. And then move to discussion. Uh, construction was slowed down last week. Um, the bridge south of Titanka, uh, the water came up pretty high there, and uh, they got their work done on Monday. But uh, the rest of the week, they really didn't get anything. So they continue to form for deck pour. Uh, the Gunter Bridge, everything is ready for guardrail installation and everything. They should be able to get that work done uh, soon. Uh, the bridge on the Bold Hobarton Road, they drove the South Pier pile, getting ready to pour concrete there. Uh, the resurfacing, we hope that they'll be in the end of this week or late, uh, early Monday, excuse me. And then we're crack filling on the road north of Smith Lake. Uh, quotes for the motor graders. I originally asked for those quotes to be due on June 4. Uh, moved that back a week. So we got a quote on motor grader and quotes for two loaders, and that'll be on the June 11th agenda. And I do, I got some zoning work that I'm working on. And we, Casuth Waste Management Association, as soon as we get that audit, which Tammy said that Elizabeth has talked with her, so financial assurance will be coming up. I think uh, we got the hard copies in the mail on Friday. So okay. I just am waiting put, for her electronic copy. Put that on the agenda for June 11th. And that's, she's on the agenda to give it to the board on June 11th also. So. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Okay. And the transfer station, we did receive, or we did have some damage there. 
uh, road department employees and transfer station employees were able to uh, get that uh, repaired. Um, if you're familiar with the shop up there, the, old, the doors, uh, the south wall of that shop in between the doors, that wall come off of its, uh, off of its sill plate. So we, there was some rotting going on in there. We temporarily patched it, took the steel off, pulled it back up on top of its sill plate. Um, we have a little bit of work to do uh, with, uh, with the rails on the overhead doors to make them work, um, but we are able to, uh, we're able to get our truck out. Now we're fortunate that no, the only thing that was in there was a truck. Um, we were able to get that out and we're able to function up there. So, again, thanks okay. to the road guys and the transfer station for all the work that they did. All right, anything further for discussion, Doug? No, I do not have anything else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one one, I think. One one. Yeah. And I don't, um, I haven't gone through the uh, messages and stuff, but I got contacted by Mark. Yeah, good morning, Todd Carter um, in the boardroom. We are ready for you. Yep, thanks. Um, Roger, have you visited with Mark about the right of way obstructions in Titanka? The guy that has them? No. Well, Mark Haverly, yeah. Yeah, okay. He said he talked with, uh, I believe, both of you guys about that. Yeah, I've been in discussion with the the person that has placed the obstruction on the road right away. However, uh, the road right away belongs to a different person. Uh, the people that uh, purchase that, the, that area has been subdivided. Okay. And they have a lot, and we have not been up there to show them where their lot line was. Uh, the person that I visited with was uh, he made a claim that that was his property. So we have a little bit of a boundary dispute right now. And I need to show them the subdivision, their deed, and go from there. If I were to send a, if I was to send a notice out to um, to remove the obstruction and go to a different party than the person who put it there, and I can certainly do that if the board would like. What's the obstruction? Well, they put up some decorative. Uh, there's a decorative. Uh, Wagon with a sign on it. It's been there for some years, for some time. Um, so I do not believe that it's a, it, it's an issue that life or death. Okay. I am working on. Okay, so that's on your radar. And yeah, yeah, I just we're. We've been busy with some construction, and we need to get up there. And I'm hoping that there's two property corners that'll make it an easy, okay. an easy definition of where their property lines at. Okay. Um, also, I was by the junkyard along Highway 9 recently. Have you seen the status up there? I drove by it this weekend, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. That's another one. Uh, if we get caught up, we will uh, go up there and remove that stuff. So. Okay. Do you have any idea how soon you could possibly address that? Because that looked fairly bad when I went by. It is not good, however, we have a lot of work and we will continue to have work with resurfacing up there. Um, our, our road department is, uh, is taking repairing roads due to weather. Right now we got a, we have 
brush that we need that we pushed off of the road we need to get that loaded up um, we continue to uh, that's our priority I guess the roads right now so. okay <clears throat> and you don't need any further action from the board with that I resolution we passed okay just wanted to check all right anything else that you had Doug or anything no. from the board all right Thanks. Thank you. Todd, we are up to discussion on the solar ordinance moratorium. Solar mor moratorium. Uh, I did the research. Um, thought it was going to be on last week. But, <laughs> um, anyway, the uh, what I found is that you can put in place a moratorium if it's for the purpose of amending uh, the zoning ordinance to address the uh, solar. Okay. Uh, it looked like to me they spoke of utility scale uh, operations uh, for the wholesale and retail selling of electricity. Um, and, uh, you know, it can't be indefinite, it has to be for a specific period of time uh, to accomplish the function. Mm -hmm. When we did the wind ordinance, um, there was a moratorium in place for that. I believe we did six months. So okay. if the board wants to do that, I've already put together, um, I guess, some a draft moratorium that okay. uh, I'd finish up and present it to you. It'd be by ordinance amendment, so much the same as what we did on the wind farm. Is there a maximum time frame on that? Or? No, I think you're limited only by the reasonableness of uh, what it takes to accomplish the goal, sure. which is to amend the the, um, the zoning ordinance to address solar. I think back in, you sent me, Doug, the comp, was it the? Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. Planning Zoning Commission, that was in 21. Uh, um, earlier, I think, even than that. Was it? Yeah, the first. That there were multiple moratoriums with wind energy. Well, now I'm talking about for the solar. Oh, the solar, the that planning, was the zoning. The comprehensive plan comprehensive, was yeah. taken care of. That was in 20. But the, yeah. would the ordinance, the moratorium, need to go before the planning and zoning commission mm -hmm. as well, right? Correct. Yeah. So, what if that's what this board wants to do? <coughs> um, I can get with Doug on that and uh, get that to him. When's the planning and zoning need? Uh, on on, on, this, on need, yeah. <laughs> when needed. What do they call it? PRN. <laughs> All right. Um, well, <laughs> What does that stand for? I said Doug knows all the methods. <laughs> well, PRN is a medical, you know that. <laughs> so. Is there any definition to utility scale? Uh, or do what we need uh, what I come across, quite a few of them deal with um, <laughs> primarily the wholesale retail. So if someone wants to put up, you know, a, for the primary use for two, to uh, provide electricity for their home or their buildings, farm site, whatever. That's not utility scale. Okay. Uh, deals with only a, a limited or small percentage use for the land that it's on, but primarily for the sale, whether it be retail or wholesale, of mm -hmm. the electricity. So there's uh, quite a few of them out there. I've already looked into those two, assuming that's the direction that this board wants to take. Um, they, uh, at least a few of them limited to 25 megawatts because it takes, shoot, was it uh, <coughs> 10 acres to create one kilowatt? I'm not sure if it's 10 or 1, but there was it was a large amount in order to get 25 megawatts. Yeah. Okay. Actually, let me see.
He has it presently, presently, the, um, it takes uh, 10 acres of land to create one megawatt uh, output. At least of the um, and that might have been that might have increased uh, as far as efficiency. That was in 2023. Okay. The constant should be making changes. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a <coughs> that's a large amount of land. Mm -hmm. 250 acres. Yeah. Do you have anybody, any companies that are speculating them? Uh, I've had, I've had two contacts. Um, what size? Or? One is, uh, I think it was with 40 megawatt. And the other one was talking about kind of how Todd was, uh, it was more of a developer uh, going out to see if there was interest um, in, you know, how people are interested, because, you know, that's kind of what they, if people are interested, they'll take land and, and those things will spread out and they just need to connect everything and get it to a, so a substation. Four hundred acres on that side. Yeah. Well, assuming that the technology is still the same, I mean, even if it's uh, improved in efficiency, it's still going to be a, a large amount of land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is, that are they going to be under the same taxation schedules as the wind turbines? I have no idea. And I have no idea. idea on that either. Of course, you know, we were expecting more, and then all of a sudden, you know, the state cut that back. So. Was Sunny Best Energy one of the ones that? Inquiries. That I don't. don't that the name does not okay. ring a bell. Um, I'm just curious because I know they've been going around Humble County. <clears throat> okay. Well, I guess I I think that'd be a good step to take if you can prepare. So if you want, then you guys don't meet next Tuesday. So it'd be the following Tuesday. Um, I can put together. Uh, obviously, it's not a decision today, but. Um, I can put together um, a moratorium for your review, um, and if you decide to go with it, um, then you can make that decision on uh, Tuesday, two weeks from today. Go ahead and put it on the agenda if you would. Do we need to give you direction as far as time frame, length of moratorium today? Or? Well, uh, I mean, it's a discussion. I'll kind of feed off what you say, but uh, I mean, I don't know how long that process takes. It, it would be very similar to the, the wind farm, I would assume. Um, same approach, same issue. Uh, six months would probably fit the bill. I don't know what your input, Doug. It would depend on the time that you feel it's going to take to get the ordinance in place uh, my if my memory is correct uh, when the first moratorium for wind energy uh, was placed it was placed they thought that in six months they would have an ordinance to regulate so it's kind of I don't know where where the board stands in that yeah. plan for actually getting an ordinance in place because once we have an ordinance that we want to go with it takes what, a month and a half or so personally finish out it. all the legal public requirements hearing, so. for publication and all that <clears throat> stuff to public hearing so i could see six to nine i mean six would if if we did something right away that put us straight towards the end of the year, um, so having a little cushion in there might help. But I could I could see it being accomplished either yet this year or early next. We'll have two new board members, mm -hmm. so a little bit extra might be advantageous for them to come on. Do like an eight month. 
That would be, well, nine. Not her. Nine would be three quarters of a year. Yeah, give them a couple months to be part of it, or a month anyway. If we had a, if we had a fairly a fairly complete version um, and did the legal process after they come on, they'd be able to put their input into if on any numbers or any last minute things. So we've had two inquiries? Correct. So they're on the starting, I mean, they're beginning to, I guess, you need to see if there's any interest out there for people to one, give up that. Another one has, uh, I think, has option on property that they, they've asked for. Uh, what is going on, what, what our rules are. <clears throat> Would this need to go to planning and zoning before the board or after the board? Planning and zoning would make a recommendation to the board of supervisors, so it would go before the board. Yeah, before so, the board of supervisors. Yeah, and so the process then in that two week period would I get it to you first and then you would call planning and zoning and then they'd go through it and make recommendations and then it'll come to the board in two weeks. That, will that be enough time for them? Uh, two weeks from today. Today, um, that will <clears throat> that would be pushing it. I, I maybe with three. Uh, so the board is going to be recommending to the planning and zoning commission that a moratorium be. Well, I think planning and zoning made a recommendation for the when. Yeah, then they make a recommendation as to the time. Um, I guess I would think that it would take a little bit more time than that to get that process going. Because the planning and zoning would go first. Yes. So June 18th? At a minimum. Four, six weeks, five weeks. I mean, it keeps raining. <laughs> I'll get the. Uh, yeah. If, I'll have them meet on a Monday and then the following Tuesday the board can act on it. How about like the 25th of um, June? June. Uh, I will have to put out, what I usually do is put out an email to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, and see if they would be available on the 24th. We can certainly shoot for it, the 25th. Okay, well. So then the 25th would be the meeting here. Yep. Yeah, that'd be our board meeting. Yep. And Todd, for the agenda item, can I just put discussion decision amend planning and zoning ordinance to address solar, or how do you want that worded? Uh, address solar mode moratorium. I guess that, that should work and if you guys can update us when you got meetings scheduled and all that is coordinated that'd be great anything anything else for this topic I do not I should be talking I can probably get that to you by the end of the week so you can okay. add it have plenty of time or just the maximum amount of time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Next up is discussion with our emergency management coordinator on the um, building on Phillips Street, emergency response and training complex. So,
Mm -hmm. you want to come up or do you want to sit back there for a second? Okay, well, I guess, I guess one of the things we had brought to us here two weeks ago was the bill for a dumpster. Um, how much, and one of the questions that was discussed then is how much trash is actually accumulated in that building or how regularly or what can you tell us about that? So it's just on to be dumped when it's full. So it's not an every monthly dump. Um, I called, so like last year, there's three times I called in the whole year to have it dumped. Um, it just depends on how many meetings and trainings are in there. There's, there's a lot more um, in the past, I don't know, I remember it was last month, I think once or twice. I gave the last one to him, but other than that, it's just only when it's full, it gets called in. So it just depends on how many meetings or trainings are held in there. Or They're not charging monthly? No, nope. it's just uh, only to dump it when dump. it's full. And I usually wait till it's on full. And well, the other question was, is there is it all, all our trash or is our people putting trash in there? That's ours, EMS, and E911s. You haven't noticed any? I haven't noticed anything else other than just our bags. <laughs> I think the biggest question was was it a monthly expense or was it yeah for dump? No, no, it's just only when it needs to be dumped. And if it's a minimal amount, sometimes they just bring it back to the office with me if it's dumpsters or anything. I mean, it's yeah. not. But when there's large bags and other big cardboard boxes and materials and things like that, you know, we'll just find out. Okay. So it's not that much as it's something just take those bags and bring them up here to these dumpsters and put them there with just a bag every now and again. It depends on what trains, and there's more than others or other equipment hauled. There's packages that sometimes EMS brings there, so there's, you know, they get their equipment hauled there to unpackage. It's cardboards and other stuff that's, I mean, that's totally it. It's just nice when you're cleaning the building, you have a place to throw all the extra crap and trying to haul it all the way back to another dumpster. Well, and if they're only charging you when you dump it, then might as well go ahead and leave it there. Yeah. Phil, you got anything or how often do you need it, use it? Well, we just finished a six month <laughs> class that met twice a week up there. The class started at 6 p.m., so those guys they're in that class, eight up there every night, so we dump that garbage pretty regularly. So, and over above that, you know, we do our monthly meetings up there. Um, we're there quite a bit, so we do generate some garbage. I don't really want to haul it somewhere else. As far as paying for it, I mean, if that's three times a year, we're talking $180, you know, and the responsibility to pay that. That's nice. a small question. Laws, there's a big from the public using it and filling it up. That's, you know, sitting there with people who just drive in or dump it, I guess that's, make sure that doesn't happen. But I think that's the chance you take on any dumpster that's around town. But it sounds to me like, for the most part, that isn't, that isn't the factor with this one. Yeah, it's like the one out here. Right, I mean, yeah. Anybody can theoretically throw something in there. Right, can. There's cameras there. If it's an issue, we should be able to see them. Right, sure. yeah. I'll just leave it there. It's like a couple, three times a year. Are we going to continue to pay that uh, supervisor's fund or? buying the courthouse is through the courthouse but um, 
Yeah, I'd have to look to see where that comes out of, but I'd guess it would come out of the annex or the sheriff's office. But I'd have to look to, to check. I'm not sure. You got one at the election? No. No. So are you guys more comfortable with with uh, with us taking care of that $180 a year charge then? I mean, is that what the discussion is here? Well, we didn't order it, so when it came to us, that was, we had to figure out which item to take it out of. It is. But we also have meetings in there that we're not informed of. So. Multiple departments use it. Yeah. It's $180. To $180. I mean, I guess as long as we're aware there's a dumpster there. I don't, I don't see where. Leave it. You're not. Bar. I mean, you're not. It's not like you're saving the taxpayers' money by having it come out of one place right. or another. No. So. And you're paying the utilities out of the supervisor. And we so, we so. took it out of the utilities line, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be fine to be there. Okay. Especially since it's not just EMA, you know, dumping there. We've got EMS, you know, using that building and dumping their stuff there too. That's kind of a shared, you know, space. I think it would be. Yeah. The building's supposed to be used for good things for the county and that's what it's being used for so I see no problem with paying for the dumpster okay that's that's fine with me um, but there was another I don't even know what company was in there when we had a EMS meeting the last time um, that was private business here in town so I don't I don't know if we're I can address that so sure. it, it's actually Hormel and when we first were able to get in there and use the building, when Roger was chair, I had talked to him about that prior to. Um, they do their hazwalker training in there. I'm a part of that. It's good for me as an emergency manager to know what trainings those companies are doing, and I participated throughout the week. Also, with their exercise in the building as well. As an emergency manager, it is also my duty to know what they're working on, what their plans are, and how their, re their response plans fit into our fire departments, our EMS, as well as my response to a hazard. If they're not in there having a party for their company, they're in there learning for hazardous response. To me, that is also part of the job and part of the, using the building as a response building. Where did they host it prior to us purchasing that building? Uh, they found different places to host it at. They just came to me and asked back when Roger was chair and it fit because of, I was involved with their HAZWAP training, which is HAZMAT stuff, and it just fit as an emergency response and emergency management partnership. Any thoughts from the board? What kind of an expense is there to have them in there? None. So heat and cooling. Yeah. But the heat's on anyway. I mean, the thermostats are set. When somebody's in the building, they, they change to the to a different temperature. Right. Well, cool. uh, the problem I have with it is that we allow Hormel to do it. You know, what's to stop other companies from wanting to use that? space for their training and stuff too. I mean, are we going to start providing that space for all of the companies around here to do their training? I would say face by face, I would come and talk to you guys. I've already had it once cleared. I didn't think it was a big deal with Formal coming back the second time. It, is it advantageous for you to have it there so that you know what, like you say, what companies, what what's going on in you know the quality of their training and the knowledge that you have with them i mean it works or, hand in hand as a partnership yes well i think it's good that you're involved with it but i also don't think that the county should be providing the space for them to hold their training 
be involved with it, yes, but not hosting it. And especially if they're not, you know, paying anything to use the building, you know, that is paid for by taxpayer dollars. And you know, yeah. to just allow private companies to come in and, and utilize that space without, you know, any compensation or, or anything like that. I don't know if that's fair for you know, other companies. Like I said, you start allowing private companies to come into that building to stop from other companies wanting to use that. And where do we say no? And where does it become, uh, well, you allow the other companies to come in here, why why aren't we allowed to? If it's used for safety reasons and to coordinate safety protocols throughout the county, what's the issue? It was paid for by ARPA funds, not county tax right. dollars. That's county That's tax dollars that pay the utilities. Yeah. Right. They're, and they're taxpayers. People at Hormel, I think they're taxpayers. They're county taxpayers. And the other thing is, what, what's the actual expense per, per month? Like, what did it cost for Hormel to come in for a day or two of training or whatever it was? I mean, was it $700 or was it more like 35 because they turned the thermostat up? Yeah. It's like $180 a year for the dumpster. I mean, what, what, what kind of money are we talking about here? What's, what's our priority? What's our safety? You know, we're looking at safety for the county. Oh, any, any liability issue with the county having other trainings there for other companies coming in? Pardon? Is there any liability issues with having other companies come in that are not affiliated with the county? Well, that's why I'm part of that, so I'm in there with them. Right. Again, I had to be off and on in the training, but I was there for all of their exercise part. I actually helped facilitate that. Um, and not only that, with, with meeting with them, now I'm doing a tabletop exercise with them as well as their quality insurance person, which I would have probably gotten out of there if I would have never done all this. They've been very good about working with me and getting things done and working on tabletop exercise so we have a hazard mitigation plan with that. I don't know, I just, I think there's there's a difference between our buildings being used for governmental purposes and private business purposes. And if that's a, a requirement of something they have to do on a routine basis, I don't know that that's our responsibility to host for. Um, so my question is, is there a written protocol? Do we have a written protocol on on county buildings and what they can and cannot be used for? Or are we just... Well, the election center we rent out and there is a charge associated with that for private individuals or private businesses that want to come in. Okay, is that the only building? No, the... Nature center. Nature center gets rent. People pay rent for that. Public, public pays rent for that. Maybe we need to... And develop they do, something they do that's a little more write clear. Out agreements for the rent of those spaces. So I mean, how many people? How many people are in there when they do that? When they go in there, it's just in shifts because they have to try to get all their shifts, and it's so many crews that come in. Wait, how many people? Um, I said there was probably 25, 30 maybe. Well, uh, but it wasn't all at one time. How about your? How about the city hall building? Too. Yeah, I don't know that we've had private entities or anybody asking to use that for any reason, like the election center or something like that. Mm -hmm. No. I don't know, does the new hotel out there have a conference room? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Maybe that's something we need to develop a little more clear policies on, but I think you walk a dangerous line having private businesses in without without a cost for that. Another issue that I have on it is the liability thing. You know, they are on county property when they're inside that building, you know was to stop us from being liable if there's an incident.
we don't have an agreement with that company when they come in to use that facility, the, the, that puts all the liability on the county. I wouldn't think it'd be any different than the liability than the public coming into the courthouse to do business. Well, our, co right. our coverage the covers that. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So is yeah. there coverage for that building as well? Uh, yeah. Not. I don't know if there is for other people to be in there. I don't know what it's classified as. We'd have I to check with be, Bridget yeah. to see. Yes. You, you got liability no matter what we right. do. Right. And I'm, I'm sitting here listening to this and my thoughts are, I think we'd want to develop partnerships with private industries as long as it deals with something with public safety. Yeah. Or deals with hazmat or that type of training. We're not going to allow people to come in there and have a birthday party. We want them to be able to utilize the building. That that's the purpose of it. I use it as a sheriff's office. We've had trainings down there in that building. Um, we had Boyd officers come up here. We have 30 to 40 officers in here doing trainings. Because our room is, isn't big enough. My building over here. I have the state come in. Department of Corrections comes in once a week. DHS comes in once a week. Um, I've got people coming in using our building all the time that our county, um, they don't pay us nothing. We just utilize a partnership and um, it, it, even if it's not an investigation, I got DHS comes in and does visits with families so that they have a supervised uh, location for the social workers. I've got Department of Corrections comes in and has public coming in to do their meetings every week. So we have that kind of activity in our buildings all around. I, I don't know if this is an issue for you guys or if it's an issue for the commission. Because they're elected officials, the commission are all of our mayors in the town. I'm an elected official. Isn't the commission responsible for the the going on in that building? No, it's no. the supervisor no. building. No. Okay. So then I guess I guess you guys could say we're going to limit it to this type of training. I have no. I don't think the commission would have a problem with that. Well, I think we need to develop a policy on it, and you know potentially have an agreement that states that if they do come in there for you know training and stuff like that joint training with our ema um they they have an agreement that they sign that you know withholds liability from the county if there's any you know issues that are you know incidents that happen in there phil did you have something you were going to say yeah um it's you guys' decision if you want to rent that building out, let people use it or whatever. But remember, the purpose of that building is an emergency response and training complex. Mm -hmm. We fill up that parking lot, and I got to get equipment out of there. We're screwed. Roger talked about you know when the when the sheriff's department was up there. I went up there, I don't know, two three times where they was having this training to get equipment out of there. And it was a pain to try to get in there and get stuff. So we have to have some kind of a working agreement that we can still get in that building. And I have supplies in there, I have equipment in there, I have an ambulance in there, and, and Chris has all kinds of stuff. We have to be able to get to that stuff, we have to be able to get it out. Um, one time I went up there, there was a meeting in there, I couldn't get in the door to get equipment out because there was you know vehicles parked right in, in front of the overhead door. So, if you are going to set guidelines, make sure it works so we still can use it for what the building was intended. Parking is definitely an issue down there. Yeah. And I mean, Roger, all the stuff you laid out were they weren't they weren't county uses particular county employees in particular, but they're still government uses. And I think that's pretty easy to justify um, when there's other other branches of governmental agencies. Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't see that as an issue at all. Yeah, I think it's different than renting a like a nature center for a birthday party or yeah. some kind of graduation. Like, yeah, with yeah, with this is government like agencies project. coming in. That's not the it same. has to be known no matter what meetings in there that we have access to that building. Yeah. Well, um, you guys that use it and um, kind of share that space, want to put something together with your thoughts or ideas? Or how do we want to handle this to make sure it's clear and consistent for everyone? I'll put something together with the commission and then everybody else can look at it. And put their thoughts in 
if they don't pick it, they can change some wording or whatever needs to be done. Okay, Phil and Derek and Roger, you able to be involved in that? Yeah. How about? Yeah, especially if she brings it to the commission. That's yep. the next time we meet, we'll put something together. Okay, well, see if you can get something put together and bring that back to us for review and we'll address it then. Anything further for this topic here today? If not, we'll move on. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got a liquor license for a bait. Everyone see that in the packet? I would entertain. Okay. Second. All right. Thanks. Any discussion? All those in We just need a voice vote. Yeah, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Cigarette permits for abate in Spring Valley is next. I'll move to approve on that. Okay, do we have a. Okay, <laughs> any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Perfect. Um, next up is the pilot for North Iowa Regional Housing. Did everyone see that in the packet? Any questions or discussion? Would move to approve. Okay. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. All right, there's one. Wellness committee minutes. Any, I don't see Donna here. The main thing there is the calendar the uh, wellness day. Wellness day. Okay. Yep. Um, anything else you want to say on that, Carter, or any other wellness? No. no. Okay. Um, we can acknowledge those minutes. And is Donna coming over for? We have to mm -hmm. call extension 500. Okay. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Maybe we can take a couple minute break. Hey, good morning, Donna. We are ready for you in the morning. Yeah. Right, thanks. Okay, we're. How oh, do I need to fill out here? Okay, um, just and sign. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Doug, did you update that resolution? I did. Okay, perfect.
I read through this over the weekend, but do you need to put per month or per pay period or something? Per pay period versus pay, because it, otherwise it's not really open. You know what, you usually need to confirm with the attorneys. The attorneys don't even catch that crap. No. Okay. I, I would have said it earlier. I say per like period. I say, uh, I think I it think, was Sunday morning I was reading I through think stuff. Per, per pay period. Because but, because otherwise the jails rotates. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's implied well, in there, right. but. Well, implied doesn't get us anywhere. No. Sometimes people go, but I only missed two in May and one in June. Right. 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 No, I do. That's, That's three. Good. That's good. A three per pay period. Well, if it kind of lines up with FMLA, or it works like, I mean, right. three is an FMLA trigger, or even a work comp, which is not an unpaid, but it's three days. So that's three days, and they lose their insurance coverage that month. Is that what it means? Yeah. Well, for well, the when does it come back into effect? Once they're up back to full time status. So three days you lose your full time status. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you don't come back to full time until you work a month? Well, or do you resume full time? I mean, instead of taking a day off each week. So what I'm trying to figure out is do you pay one month's premium or two months premium? Well, it depends on when you come back. Yeah. We've got That's not very clear. Well, I know it's not very clear, but trying to operate, trying to run it the way it was, it just said unpaid. It didn't say one day, five days, 20 days. Yeah, I'm just confused. I know. I'm not saying you're saying. No, normally, like, you know, I. I work the month of May, so out of the paycheck for May that I receive on June 1, uh, health care is part of that payroll. So that in June goes towards health care. Now, so if in May, if I would have days that would be that would be not covered, then I would have to pay it. June, if I work the whole month, then it's back. It's going to be okay. And the number when is the best one? Okay. Zero. Well, if you're qualified, it kicks in right away and just doesn't really apply to you. So if Pamela over supersedes this paragraph, we'll right. do this. Yeah. Right. This is only an unpaid when you've exhausted. And you don't have any sale on Available. Okay. Makes more sense, but that's not in here. Okay. I think it's oh, yeah. in that first paragraph. Oh, it's exhausted the all the sick leave, vacation, comp time for some days, and FMLA okay. leave. So it's only for a narrow window. Must make it written application. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now that everyone's back here, Doug does have the resolution we discussed earlier updated, which is resolution number 05 282403. It describes the portion of the road as as we discussed earlier with allowing 250 feet for um, Glenn Preston to have access. I would move to approve that resolution. Is there a second? Okay. Is there any Carter yes, second? second. Um, is there any discussion or questions? You can continue to maintain that as a level B road. Yes. Yeah, that'll be a minimal maintenance. Uh, it does not. No. Barricade across the end of it. Um, we'll probably just start right there at that uh, point, 2,125. Just putting a road close sign, hoping that uh, people will stay off. Stay off of that. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Um, roll call vote, please. Platt. Yes. Jerks. Yes. Wachter. Yes. Nath. Yes. Stecker. Yes. Motion carried unanimous, and that is taken care of. There's that one there, and I'll record that one there. Thank you. Thanks.
right. Time. Thank you. Oh. All right. Next up is review and approve the addendums to the handbook, sections 3 7, unpaid leave, and 4 1, group insurance benefits. Um, Donna, you want to yep, present can, on I this? I can and jump into that. So um, basically, in preparation for July 1st, we looked at needing to um, update section 4.1 regarding insurance payments, or excuse me, contribution to the premium that was acted on for full-time employees. But in addition to that, we um, asked Aller, Allers and Clooney to look at our unpaid leave policy, section 3.7. I've underlined some of or the, the changes that, that we discussed with Ann. Um, primarily, the reason for that was just to clarify, if someone is on family medical leave, they've got a qualifying event, this does not apply. It's only if they, are, they do not qualify for FMLA or they've ran out of their paid leave. Um, I think our previous wording in, in this section was interpreted that if you're at FMLA leave, um, if you have no paid time, you would pay. But we're required to, during FMLA, to pay for the insurance coverage. So that makes kind of why we're here. The other thing is there really was not a defined when that is triggered. And so it's been very, in, I guess it, I don't think consistent is the right word, it's been difficult to clarify with employees if you are gone, do not have paid time off, when does this trigger your responsibility to pay for insurance? If that makes sense. So I think even, so we were just having a little bit of discussion in the third paragraph, um, it says employees on an unpaid leave status of three or more days. Um, Doug's, and I think that's a good idea, we should probably clarify per pay period because of our rolling different pay periods or three pay periods versus yeah. month. Um, so that's what the wording is for section 3.7, the changes. And then basically section 4.1 um, is just the, the addition or clarification that the county pays the entire contribution for single employees health care coverage and requires employee participation for all full time and their eligible dependents. Again, these are really hesitant to add addendums to the handbook, but we're we're really kind of starting to get ourselves painted into a corner until we get our handbook updated. Did Anne give you any timeline on that? No. No. She was very responsive to this. Um, but no. Okay. No. Um yeah, I can see that we need to get some stuff in place before the new fiscal year starts. Um, besides adding the per pay period, is there anything else I think we need to clarify on top of this? Are there any thoughts from the board? Yes. I think that is per pay period is a good clarification. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know it, I, I know I'm jumping in. I shouldn't even comment. I know it's it's difficult for department heads to understand the health benefits, the paying for that when there's an absence. But we've got to have some universal yeah. approach to this. Otherwise, it just gets really difficult for payroll to manage. How about the um, three or more days? Should that be? Is that, do we need to define days any further if someone has a half day somewhere in between or anything like I mean, that might be just trying to think of scenarios that might come up. I'm just going to say it is really a challenge. Um, it is. <laughs> it's a challenge. And I guess it's just leaning, you know, or trying to clean up that if you've got three and on the fourth day of absence during that, that period, 
we've got to we've got to trigger something. Otherwise, it's just is so spotty and so inconsistent. Well, and then you'd have the. And I, I guess I will say, our department heads also have tried to work with individuals in these situations to try and allow comp time, to try and put food. Or, so outside of that, I think there, it's not like it's, oh my gosh, we've just come to this decision and we're done. It's the yep. lack of clarity when that happens. And not, not everybody is familiar with what our policy says. You know, that's another thing about, you know, making sure our department heads know what that policy is. Yeah. which Donna has tried to do and we were hoping the department heads would be here this morning so they'd under there is a view yeah there is view so they would understand what the change is yeah. um, do any of you guys as department heads have any questions or thoughts here is it tough for you yeah we have so many employees <laughs> here you probably get this question every day i bet yeah. It, and for, you know, it should be not really even something that we tend to have to deal with, but I think it's just to have it clear when it, if it does, if and when it does happen so that there's a defined time versus before it just said, and actually it was kind of interpreted way off prior to the um, clarification of not on FMLA leave. And we have been working with Ehlers and Cooney on um, getting this clarified, so. Okay. I guess I I'm good with the stuff that's proposed for now um, to get it in before the fiscal year starts. Um, if we run into any issues with partial days or any concerns that way, I suppose we could address it when that comes up. Hopefully, it isn't an issue. Unfortunately, you can't prepare for everything, and, no. and some of it's just trying to work out and look at what the situation is, but we need something so that it's not just open-ended. Yeah. I think that was the, the reason for putting in the, the days. Clarification. No. Yeah, I think we should approve it as written with... Uh, well, the clarification, with for, the clarification. for pay period. For pay period. Yeah. So yeah. I would move to approve the changes. Okay. Second. You guys are quick today. <laughs> uh -huh. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Thank you. Thank Perfect. You. Anything Thank else you, comes everybody. up, let us know. Okay. Well, we'll probably be back to revisit the whole thing and it probably won't go this quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Text in March. Perfect. Yes. You know, I'm pretty surprised. We don't have like twenty drainage repair requests after last week. <laughs> There's so much water they can't yeah, they can't the, issue there, yes. yeah. the yeah. ones that have problems are still underwater. Yeah. 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 We have probably an issue, but we'll have to wait till it dries up a little bit well, to find out where that issue is. I know I was by um we're good more here the other day coming over the weekend and there's still ponds over there. There's sloughing on Drain 4 again up north. How far north? Um, pretty well towards the top end of Drain 4. Somebody talked to me, I can't remember. I said they were sloughing, I told them to make a request. Okay. Yep. But there's, there's going to be sloughing uh, by Wesley. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was even, they didn't get it's quite as much rain over West Bend, like Whittemore, but still got a fair amount, and there's sloughing on on PHP one again too. Right. And so some damage there. Have. Some culverts that yeah. were broke. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. not uh, yeah. not yeah. culverts uh, pipes, excuse me. Yeah. We're gonna have several places on four and on PK one 
that I've heard so far that are going to need some attention, rip rip something. The lower lower portions of floor that I've been by, I haven't seen anything uh, for damage. So uh, I have a question whether there's FEMA repairs available and there's not. So. For, well, not yet. For PAP1? Yeah. In and anywhere else? Yeah, and I did talk to Leon about that too. Um, we have to wait till it goes through the process. If it does, if we do get a presidential disaster declaration, there would be. Um, you just gotta have the video and, or photo proof or, yeah. Documentation, documentation be it, before yeah. repairs yeah. are made is yeah. critical. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is very critical. Um, a fair amount around, there's a bridge the east side of Whittemore. Um, well, kind of my Mogler's farm there that uh, I think Brian Goodman owns part of it too, but uh, that, that, that washed out around the bridge there as well. The bridge is fine, it's just, yeah, there's, there's damage along there. Yeah. But no, we, it's too early right now to know if, if FEMA will be available for this rain event or not. I would say to the uh, landowners, get pictures, <laughs> document it. Yeah, yep. And really that's one of the kind of nice things about our policy right now, anything over 15,000 we're supposed to have photos and GPS locations and have all that documented anyway. So if contractors are used to that, any substantial repair yep. should be documented as they do it anyway. Yep. Um, so that's definitely a piece of the puzzle there. Um, but yeah, I, I know there's other areas of the state that obviously got it worse than us for different reasons, um, the tornadoes and stuff, but um, I did touch base with Leon and he said we're not, we're not to that stage yet. But from the sounds of our conversation before, we might get to that stage. So anything that does come up here this spring or this summer as results from these rains, we need to pay close attention and document. With that, I guess we can roll into our discussion about the assessments here with Marge. Um, you want to start with anything, or board have anything you guys want to start with? Yes. Tenure folder. Yep. And repairs that were done. And, um, estimate what you would like to collect for the outstanding balances that are there. Yep. Um, I guess I can kind of start off with the big one here. Um, drain four, we have 700,000 in the assessment column and I've talked with Leon to get a rough idea of what we may have um, for money coming from that project yet, which was potentially in the 300,000 range, maybe a little more. Um, but the, the dollar figure that's here is from the previous um, clean out. So, because we've already received a substantial dollar figure for the FEMA repair we, we just did. Um, but I think, we, I think we need to have a public hearing to discuss and inform landowners of what's coming and why it's coming. Because the last public hearing we had, we talked about a $300,000 assessment for the project that we just completed and we did that last year and we are on track to have that pretty well cover that project's cost, but what's on the account is, is from the project that happened before that. Um, 
and I don't I don't want to repeat the stuff with drain four lateral two and four that we had where everyone got a surprise assessment. Um, any thoughts from the board on that? I think just you're saying the majority of the seven hundred thousand is from the clean out that was done by Reitzel before you did the yeah the two, one time, slope. the two times and the existing. yeah the the two two part project yeah. yep. Yeah, because dollar wise, um, if you kind of total up what our actual expenses were for this recent <clears throat> FEMA project and take that off what we assessed, what we've got from FEMA, and what we expect to get from FEMA, we are pretty well on track with all that. So um, that, to get, that to get it straight, there's 700000 here. Are you saying there's 300000 from FEMA yet? Off of this 700? No, no. no. So off to the left hand side, the drain balance is over a million dollars. Okay. So there would still be 300,000 on the account that we would expect to get taken care of by finishing out the FEMA <clears throat> project funding and stuff. Um, because we're responsible for 15% at the end of the day. So that's why we. We did the 300,000 based off of our expenses and the 15% that we knew we would be responsible for. Um, did we collect the 15% before that? That's what I'm saying. Last year, our assessment for 300,000 was to, to cover that percentage, yeah. Um, and I I don't remember if we were a little high or a little low on that, but it was it was close within rounding margin. Um, so the timing of when those payments come in, um, from FEMA and the other stuff, um, that'll affect interest to a little bit of a degree for the, that total project cost. But when we, um, but the 700,000 that's proposed for an assessment here is from the part one and part two of the projects before the Reitzels did. You guys collecting for that? I got all no. the spreadsheets. I don't see how you can say that. I got all the spreadsheets. Well, this isn't a time for public comment, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Well, fine. That's why I suggested we have a public hearing. Um, so, I guess that's that's what I had on drain for 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 the board's information. Um, You're saying postpone it till they have a public hearing? Or no? No, and we don't we don't need to act on these today, do we? We have. You kind of yeah. need. To, you can do. you can reserve to make an adjustment to one of the assessments, but. Okay, I was thinking when we had talked, we had another week or. To that we could work with it or review. First but of June, we used to have these done. Okay. Yeah. It's in the code for me. Okay. Um, do you have any something else there, Roger? Or no, I find with what you're saying. Okay. You're gonna. Okay. That's a large amount of money to collect and you're going to have to explain it. Yep, it is. I was a little lost in what FEMA paid and what the people are already paid. Yep. Um, drain four, lateral four here, we have 560000 Um We've talked about that. That, we had public hearing on that. Right, we've done that. So. And we got the response back from insurance and... We, uh, yeah. We're fine with spreading that. I don't, we don't have an option but to spread that. Yeah. Do we want to send out a formal letter to everyone so okay. they or so they seven hundred thousand? No, the lateral lateral four where it's five sixty. We had a meeting on it. We had a public okay. hearing, but then we haven't sent anything out since we got the insurance response back well they're not paying anything well no but 
but landowners don't know that. Uh, yeah, I think we it, need to inform landowners. I think it. I think it'd be good to put a simple letter together and and cop or and include some of the insurance information or their the insurance company's response and give them a heads up that this assessment is planned um, before they get their tax statements. I, I have no issues with that. That's a good idea because there's people that are assuming they didn't have to pay it. Right. Yeah. And offer the 10 year waiver for right. the large assessment. Yep. So do you want to have separate motions on some of this? You can. So you have it in the minutes that we offer waivers or do you want to join? Um. <clears throat> I guess. I think. Let's let's maybe review everything in the spreadsheet first, and then if we want to go back and make motions, we can probably hit that at the end if if that <clears throat> works for you. You offer ten year waivers on. You. <laughs> More than one. Yes. Yeah. In here, so. Yep. 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 As indicated. Yep. You didn't offer ten more than a ten year waiver on any. No. Mm -hmm. so I maybe maybe the uh, drain sixty sub one is that a twenty twenty year waiver for that project? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would have that, that would have been acted on at the at the at the meeting. What I'm trying to say is that we could offer. You can do quite a bit of these with all just with one motion, except for <laughs> your three, four, lap four. You got a twenty-year. Yeah, DD, DD twenty. That one separate. Which one are you talking about, there, Roger? Your FEMA one. Jane for opened it. Yeah, where you're going to have a public hearing, you got to have that separate motion. Yeah, I mean, I, we we would need a motion to set the public hearing, but we don't have that on the agenda today. Um, so we can we can just have that in the minutes that we will we will anticipate scheduling that. I don't think we need a motion for that. But yeah, if you can just have a discussion point in there in the minutes there. Yeah, and do we want to offer um, waivers on that seven hundred thousand? I would suggest that you would. I could probably go either way. I think I know Mark said a lot did not take the waivers last year when we offered it, but it was half the dollar figure too. And since we offered, since there was waivers on the first, us uh, first parts of the project, part one and part two, I think it'd probably be good to offer it, um, and then people can make the decision if they take it or not. Do you have anything else there, Roger? No. Other, otherwise, one of the. You got 60 sub one, but that was in the hearing. Yep, that was yeah. in the hearing. Yeah. So that's the only other one that I thought. We got DD20 listed to offer a 10 year waiver. Um, Marge or Roger, do you know what that repair was off the top of your head by any chance? Because that's... The D20, I thought that was an improvement. Yeah. The dollar that's there was from a improvement project before? Yes. Yes, that didn't get That didn't collected. get completely collected. Okay. Um, that's my recollection. Yeah. <clears throat> do we want to have a public hearing for that too because that's 
over fifty thousand. And if it's if it's from a project they thought was paid for before, it might be if it's going to be a similar situation to drain four, lot two, and four. Some notification might be a good thing because that's up by the Union Slough, isn't it? Drain twenty. I think so. mm -hmm. Isn't that by Antones? I feel like I... I can't tell yeah, you. Yeah, I, I thought it was a going over by... No, that's 18. By West. West of the Union Slough. Yeah, on the northern well, end. West yeah. side of the slough and then... Yeah, north. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's right right on the northwest side of Antones and like TJ's place and all that's in there. And then the federal ground and that goes through the other that goes and ties in lower. Closer to the headquarters. There's two branches, they're about a mile or a mile and a half. Two it dumps in the yeah, both of them do. Through, uh, I can't think who used to live there. Are you talking about the north one or south one? The south one. 120. Um, that's north of the Stork place. Yeah, Storks. Mm -hmm. People from Buffalo Center, I'll think of their names. Went through there for them. Okay. Um, I guess if that was an if that was the improvement project that we're doing the assessment for, what do you think? Roger, you think we should have a public hearing on that if it's similar to What's the other? What's the biggest assessment? Do you, do you remember more? I'm not sure. Six, maybe 6,000. I'm not sure. I'm just thinking if we're offering a waiver, that's And if it's from an improvement project, we probably should have a meeting on that. Any any thoughts from anyone? Well, I guess since it's in my district, I think it. I think it's probably advantageous to schedule a public hearing for that. More communication. Yeah. Better. Send letters out. We'll we'll probably need to pick a time or look at look at the calendar and then yeah we'll have it on the agenda to set the date and time yeah. and and then send March letters. Letters ready. Yep. After we set the date, yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. So I was saying set the date on the eleventh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Not not set the yeah. date for the right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. As long as we're talking about letters, who's gonna draft the letter to send out to the. D4 lat 4 landowners. I didn't hear that. 
uh, Tammy's question was who wants to draft or who's going to draft a letter to send to DD4, lot 4? And DD20? Well, the DD4, lot 4 is about the public hearing we already had um, <clears throat> with the insurance stuff. Do we want to have Marge draft something and then work with the two of us? Um, yeah. Since it's. I can't think of a better way to do it. Would you be able to do that, Marge? Sure. I mean, just get something started and then yeah. you can talk to me and Roger. And mm -hmm. Tammy doesn't have, understand what's going on. Well, that's. Oh, she, yes, she, I she, did. Yeah. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah you don't want to draft that one? It, it happened before it she happened was before here. It happened before I was here, but, but I will. Help. I mean, yeah, if you, if you can help, that'd be great, too. And then you guys, I mean, should be involved in, in it. it. Yep, really? yep. And maybe we can put that together for either our next meeting or the following one to have the board approve, and then we'll formally send that out. Um, for... I guess any anything else? I'm kind of on the second page here. There's some stuff for drain 33. Is that from an improvement project before too? I don't. I don't even know where that drain is. Yeah. That's by type. Is that one of yours? Yeah. Drain 30. 33, Roger. Yeah. There's North Main, East Main, and West Main. Top of my head, I don't remember what we did, do you, Mark? It was before me. 33 is on the south side of the town. But it would take time. Where do you got it? Oh, put that in the ring and then yeah, the yellow. Yeah, and then it's put in wrong, was it? Okay. Yeah, that's the one that, yeah, the one that did. Is that this one? I think so. Do you think there needs to be anything for communication on that one? I, I don't I don't know nothing about projects, so I don't know why it Push back. I really don't. Except that it was a disaster project. Okay. It was one where they started out on the wrong grade and they had to dig a tile back up and relay it all because Ouch. they didn't know the difference between the top of the tile and the bottom. That's a big difference. 33 inches off. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Okay. Well. They didn't get very far. So. That's good. I would hope not. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any comments or anything on that one, Roger? Are you good with it, or? I think I'm good with it. Okay. Um, second page here. We got sixty sub one. Um, that was all obviously at the hearing and stuff, which um, I just roughly added up the dollars you had here, Marge, and I came up with a total of 942, which that's rounding, but our balance is 871. Is that um, not with interest? Not with interest. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah. Um, does this factor in the payment from um, yes Johansson's? Okay, perfect. Okay, um, I think that's all my questions for that one. That rest of that should be good, and we already approved the waiver for twenty years for that. Sixty, sixty sub three. Do you know what that's for? I don't know. 
don't even know where that subdistrict is in 60. Mm -hmm. That's another that uh, the waivers weren't covering what needed to be collected. Okay. And that was from a project in 2017? Yeah. How big of a group of landowners is that? Or where even is that in, in, in 60? Like, where's the subdistrict at? Do you remember? I'm not sure if it's in Grant or Eagle or... Well, <clears throat> Sub districts aren't always easy to find on here. Sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. I guess I don't I don't know anything about the project, but if we're sending another assessment on something from 17 we probably owe it to them to have a discussion on that I'm so I'm gonna say add that to the list for public hearings for 60 sub one 60 sub three that wasn't in on the project 60 sub four is the big project we're doing right now the improvement that's that's separate and we're not assessing anything there um, 60 sub one is a project that was just completed that's we just good. we just talked about that assessment but 60 sub three is the next one right under 60 sub one yeah and i still don't know where it's at but Sixties in Grant, but I don't know which. Was that a tile system, Marge? Yes. Okay, because a lot of these just say mains. And the laterals, I don't see a sub. But I think sub one, I don't know if that even shows. That just says main. So it might not be labeled on here. And I can look look at the map with you on that later but to see who's affected landowners on that but <clears throat> 60 sub 3 you, you got 20 here of waiver to begin with there so it must right. have been a big tile project I'm not sure yeah I don't remember it that's what I would it's, guess yeah Gotta be close to the state line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, 60 in general is right up there along the border. Um, drops down about four miles in some places, but not very far. No. It's it's all close to the border there, and all that water goes north. Yeah, how many people are involved in that collection on that? Not for sure. I don't have a list of No, this is where it no. state line. This is this is no Jack. No, no, that was a different one. This is this is over straight north of Sway City for yeah, the most this part. Is west. The golf course would be over by Lakota and up. Yeah. 60s all over there, north of Sway City. Yep. It only goes about 
two, three miles east of the Soy City blacktop P30. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess... We got 17 and a half thousand for drain 80 with almost 15,000 of that being legal fees. Um, anything else on that page? We've got about 40000 on the account, but we don't have anything for assessment. There's FEMA repairs listed there. Yeah, but it should cover when we collect that. It it's expected that. to cover all of it? Yep. Okay. What drink? Where's Where's that even at? That's by Wesley. It's by... It's... West Wesley, I think. Yeah, it's west of Wesley. Okay. Is that the one that... You can sink set a bunch of ground in that one. Okay, yep. 132. Was that cleaning out the ditch? It repaired the site. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Came out at uh, raising the stuff. Yeah, the water. Yeah. Okay, I remember that one then. Yeah. And it wasn't underwater anymore this time. That used to be the first one that flooded. So the tile must work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a big one. It was like a 60-inch or anything. Right. Oh, yeah. People said so they walked in it. Yeah. That, was, that was on 84. Yeah. That was on 84. But yeah, that was a big one. Which that would only be... Well, how far over is that, I guess? I'm looking at what's the area. 132 is I just, side by side. Of just west of town, 84 is right next door to the west. Yeah. Not a very big one. Okay. Um, 159, I had the same thing. We got 25 there, but you expect that to be covered by FEMA repairs? Right. Okay. Where's that one? That's up north. Is that in my district or? Yes. Where's that at? Picking people. Slay. <laughs> I mean, oh. I don't know without looking. Just trying to remember what we even did on that. It was a large on it, broken tile. <coughs> oh, was that by Bancroft? Could be. So is that Harrison? Um, yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay. Yep, I know what we did there. Um, and I guess the last page we got joint drains listed and those are also in those other files um, where is BAK 61 note that's a trustee district with Palo Alto County. It's a private trustee. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just listed it here because it's joint. Okay. I mean, there's nothing listed for it. Right. I, I was just curious. Yeah. <coughs> All right. 
Any other questions, comments, anything for the rest of this here? Otherwise, do Roger, you think motion to set the 10 year waivers for those drains? If I included in the motion to approve the 10 year waivers as presented in the proposal. Okay. Is it already listed on there, the 10 year waivers? They're in a couple of different spots, but yeah, yeah March, March yeah, has them yeah. laid out. to make that motion yes. at some time, so we just want to involve it in the motion. You want that in? Yeah within the motion to approve the assessments or a separate motion? I think we could do it all in the Yeah, yeah. as indicated. Okay. Um, well, if that's the case, I would entertain a motion to approve the fall assessment schedule as presented. Can I write down what I have so that I... This is what I oh, have yep. approved 2024 drainage assessments and 10 year waivers as indicated with additional requirements as follows hold public hearings for DD4, DD20, DD60 sub 3, and send a letter to landowners on DD4 lot 4. Works for me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And to approve the 10 year waivers, we're going to have to have a public hearing. Yeah, yep. we had that yeah, as indicated. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, is this for joint and or just the regular? The joint ones, I think we have to do the separate. resolution okay. separately. Okay. Roger, would you make that motion? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? <coughs> I'll second. Any further discussion? Questions, comments, anything? All right, roll call vote, please. Black. Yes. Jerks. Yes. Wachter. Yes. Math. Yes. Stecker. Yes. Motion carried unanimous. All right. Um, joint ones. We have to have a resolution to approve the joint ones. Here in the package. Yeah. March then yeah, Yep. It's in the packet. Yep. Do you have copies of those? Or do we need to print copies real quick? No. Yeah. I think I have one too here. I have some too. Three of them. Hamlet, one of big roll. Four. And cop. Okay, um, so the first one we'll do is EK2, lateral BB, total dollar amount is 1475, so that's 516 and 25 cents to Kasuth, 958 and 75 cents to Emmett, um, and this is resolution number 052804. Or five twenty eight twenty four zero four. Um, any discussion on that or questions? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve that resolution. Okay, I'll second that. <coughs> any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Class. Yes. Jerks. Yes. Wachter. Yes. Matt. Yes. Stecker. Yes. Next one is for EK5. This is resolution number 05282405 with $1,000 levied, which comes out to 508 and 40 cents for Kasuth. Emmett is four ninety one and sixty cents. Any questions on this resolution? If not, I would move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thanks. Any discussion or questions? 
Roll call vote, please. Class? Yes. Sharks? Yes. Wachter? Yes. Nath? Yes. Stecker? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next one is resolution number 05 28 This is for HK 587 87. Total dollar amount is $1,000 with 800 being paid by Kasu, 200 by Emmett. Um, I would, or that uh, should be Hancock. Is that wrong? Okay. Yeah. Different. Yeah, got the wrong county. And yeah. Yeah, 200 by Emmett. Um, okay. Do you want me to just scratch this quicker? Oh, it says in the line right above to supervisors of the suit and Emmett County. Yeah, just, okay. Yeah, yeah. we'll just have we'll to do. clean up those typos. Yeah. Um, but the dollar amount's the same and all that. Um, so we'll, we'll get that changed, but is there any other Questions, comments, or discussion? Other way. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Platt? Yes. Jerks? Yes. Wachter? Yes. Matt? Yes. Stecker? Yes. Motion carried unanimous. All right. I believe we have all of the joint drains taken care of. Perfect. You want me to sign these? Yes, please. Copy after we purchase. Are you gonna retake that one? Or are you like, yeah, I yeah. I'll I'll sign it when that. you're done there. Okay. Thank That'll you. be fine. Thank you. Uh, yep. Thank you. Um. All right. Repair request. Looks like we got one here. Roger. I think you're the winner. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to call Peterson. Uh, <clears throat> it's on 33 East Main. It's the old 33 Kyle District. And it's either plug broken or tree roots. I haven't decided yet. We haven't dug far enough. I checked some intakes in the road ditch, and there's no drainage north of the dirt road. Okay. So we we'll have to do some digging, and it's in set aside our federal reserve ground there south of Tyke. Okay. So we might have some issues in there. We'll figure it out. Uh, Brant's going to do some of the work. Good to have the supervisors take care of the request. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion. There's a grove planted on top of the main canal. Ooh. Oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah, might well, need Well, that's to. better than the silo that I had last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might need to address that. All right, I think we are up to discussion with our auditor. Okay, reminder. Thank you, Marge. Or Thanks, anything, Marge. anything further for Marge? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder: Tomorrow morning is the Casey Palo Alto County Economic Development Intern Breakfast at 7:30 at Columbia Event Center. Mm -hmm. um, and no meeting next week due to the primary election. Um, and for the week after that, um, we'll be talking to Elizabeth with Gardner and Thompson. She'll be presenting our audit report for fiscal year 23. And then we'll also be awarding the contract of services for fiscal years 24, 25, and 26 at that time. So far, we don't have any in yet. So um, yeah. but we'll be doing that on the 11th as well. 
Um, primary election, a week from today. We'll be delivering election equipment, getting ready for that. Um, absentee voting is going strong. So remember, you can absentee vote at our counter until June 3rd. Um, just a reminder, uh, you need to still appoint somebody to the NRIH board and um, North Iowa Area Council of Government. So um, I'm keep going. looking for somebody. Um, it's been a while now that we've had those, so um, keep doing that. And then that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't have anything last week. Before I get up today, I ordered Tuesday. Do I have anything? Yeah. Nothing. I, as the North Iowa Community Action meeting last Wednesday, it was one to Wednesday, um, it was kind of the biggest thing was. They've been an organization for 60 years, so they had a celebration, dinner, at barbecue and stuff, ordered for people. And, and uh, as far as business, though, um, change it, made some changes to funding um, when things were coming out. Did get a report on the community services block grant. Uh, that totaled about $339,000 that was received through will be received through the end of the year. Um, also received about $48,000 in low income energy assistance, ARPA money, um, and made a couple other changes to programs. So nothing earth shattering. All right, that was. Sounds about I got care connections this afternoon. Okay. Um, I had CIJDC last Friday. Um, we did have quite a long meeting and a bunch of discussion. Uh, a couple things to highlight. We did have a strong financial year last year and we are going to reduce our member rates for detention down to $120 a day. So we're actually going down 20 bucks a day on it's member rate. Half of, what? You're half of what you're going to charge. Um, well, I think they just charge a flat dollar amount, but they're they're actually <clears throat> the expenses they turn into the state are not quite double what ours are um, for very similar amounts of service. So yeah, we are substantially different than some other centers that way. But. Um, transportation's on top of that, but that's that's a nice highlight to be able to reduce rates. So, um, anything yeah, doesn't happen anywhere these days. <laughs> not very often. Um, Except your propane bill when it doesn't snow and it's not literally cold. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Nothing else. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. We are adjourned at 10 19. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.